Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweater, and in this tutorial, you're going to be learning screen retouching from the very start to the very end in about 10 minutes. So, just spare around 10 minutes of your time, and you learn frequent separation screen retouching in just 10 minutes. So, what you have to understand about frequent separation, it divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. In the high frequency layer, we have our textures, in, and in the low frequency layer, usually we have our colors. So, when we fine tune the textures alone and also fine tune the colors or the skin tones, we end up with a nicely retouched image. So this is what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. We're just going to come to the background layer and simply press Ctrl Command J once and press Ctrl J the second time or Command J the second time right there. And I'm going to name, rename that to low frequency and I'm going to name the upper layer into high frequency. So like I said, the Low frequency layer contains the colors and the high frequency layer contains the textures. So we're just going to come to the low frequency layer now, hide the high frequency layer and simply come to filter, then come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So when you come to Gaussian blur, we're going to come to the radius. So this is the most important step for your frequency separation. This also determines the amount of skin texture that you want to remain with in the final image. So you have to zoom out and look for the area that has prominent skin textures and start taking up the radius. By left clicking and dragging up to when the details in the skin are just starting to get close or disappear from the image so you have to stop at the point when the details or the, text, the textures in the image are just starting to disappear so at around 7 that is when mine are just starting to disappear or get lost so after doing that remember your image may be having different levels of textures or skin details from mine so just come and simply click ok so your radius may be different from mine because your image may be having a varying level of texture or details. So just going to come the high frequency and now activate it by clicking on the eye icon. Then come to image and come down to apply image. So when you come to apply image, it's going to open up this apply image dialog box right here. And you can see that I have a 16-bit image that I'm going to work on. So you have to take maximum attention on this first step. So the source is the name of the image and the layer from which we want to extract our textures is the low frequency layer. Make sure the channel is RGB and make sure the blend mode or the blending is on add. This is for a 16-bit image. So if I told you have 16 right here, it means your image is going to be a 16-bit image. The scale is 2 and make sure the offset is also 0 and make sure preserve transparency and mask cannot check. Then for a 16-bit image, you turn on the invert option. And you can see the textures on the, on the gray kind of layer. But if I told you you're having an 8-bit image, or if I told you have 8 right it means the image is going to be 8-bit. So for an 8-bit image, you select the low frequency layer. The channel is RGB. The blend mode for an 8-bit image is going to be subtract. Opacity at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 20 offset 128. And the invert option is not turned on. Or it is not checked. And you can see the textures on the gray kind of layer. But for my case, my image is 16-bit image, so I'm just going to use a blend mode of add, and I'll simply invert this with a scale of 2 and offset of 0. Opacity at 100%, I'm just going to click OK. So I'm just going to come to a blend mode that is going to hide or remove the gray color from the overall image, and that blend mode is known as linear. So just come to right here, normal, and simply left click and come and select linear light, and you get back the colors and the details the way to, they were meant to be within the photo or within the image and we're going to put these two in a group by selecting and selecting both layers by pressing down the control command and selecting both layers and dragging them in the folder icon put them in a group or you can simply press control or command g on the keyboard so i'm just going to name this group to frequency separation so we're just going to come and left click to open up the group and simply select the low frequency layer and after selecting it we're just going to come under the brushes and simply right click and get the Mr. Brush tool. For older versions of Photoshop, you may find your Mr. Brush tool down here, or for later versions of Photoshop, you may find your Mr. Brush tool below here under the tools. So just come and set up the Mr. Brush tool with hardness of 0%. Make sure it is clean right here, and we want to select the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke, the second option right here. Then make sure the weight is 9%, the load of 75%, the mix at 90%, and the flow of 100%. Also make sure sample alias is not checked so make sure that this option is not checked because when you leave it checked it means that the mixer brush tool is going to be copying information from the texture layer which is the high frequency layer, and painting it back in the color layer 
all the low frequency layer which you don't want so make sure sample orders is not checked and how to use the emitter brush should you have to make sure that it is all your photo is zoomed out and you don't zoom in so how to better blend the skin tone transitions within the image you come and hide the high frequency so that you can only look at the colors within the image and when you are done doing that simply come to the low frequency layer and if at all your mixer brush tool is showing a cross icon make sure that you press the caps lock key and that is going to bring back the default circle for your brush tool then as i'm working on the image you may notice that my mixer brush tool is going to be having two circles the reason for that is because my screen recorder that i'm using to record the tutorial or elaborate for you is going to be highlighting a second circle for my mixer brush tool so this doesn't matter so make sure that your mixer brush tool is having only one circle unless you're recording or doing a screen, a screen recording so make sure you increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and how to use the mixer brush tool you make sure it is slightly smaller than the area that you're trying to work on and you simply left click and hold down and you move the mixer brush tool in the direction of how the area that you're trying to work on is moving so i'll be moving mine in this kind of a uh, direction because the forehead is moving in this kind of direction an up down kind of direction so we are basically trying to mix colors that are looking alike and trying to create an even skin tone or color transition and you can see why the color is changing from one area to another just come and blend or mix that color so i'm just going to be doing this on the rest of the image and you can see that this is making the image look better and the more plastic it is looking the better because when you come and turn on the textures and we turn the overall group on and off you can see that we have a nicely retouched image so what we're going to do we're just going to be working on the rest of the skin by using the mixer brush tool and when it comes to the chin er or the cheek area we're just going to move it in this direction and mix these colors alone just like that so that we can create a nice and smooth harmony between these colors so i'm just going forward this because i don't want the tutorial to be a long one and i'll see you after we have blended or evened out the skin color or a skin tone transitions And now you can start we're done blending or mixing the skin tone transitions and you can say quick before and after so after blending you come and turn on the texture or high frequency layer and you can click you left click to turn on the overall group for your retouching the before and after so after that there are areas that we may have missed out when you're using the mixer brush tool or when you're trying to blend or mix the skin tone transitions within the image using the mixer brush tool and that is why we come and we select the lasso tool so with the lasso tool selected simply come and measure the feathering is around 22, 22 pixels so just type in 22 right here so the reason for that is because when you select the skin area and after i press q you can see that the edges of the selection are really smooth unlike when the feathering is at zero pixels because at zero pixels the edges are going to be very 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 sharp so let me just show you that so you can see that the edges are very sharp so just one smooth edges from the selection so make sure you are in new selection mode and the feathering is around 22 pixels i'll just type in 22 and simply click on enter so after doing that i'm just going to come and make a selection on the skin area so make sure you follow the way the face is shaped and just come to filter and come back to blur and come down to gush and blur so when you come to gush and blur come the radius this is the initial radius that we had for separating the frequencies into the low frequency layer and the high frequency layer so just come the radius and simply drag that up up to when you feel like you're having a very nice texture for your image but the other trick that you can use alternatively is for whichever radius that you may have used for your image or for the gaussian blind the first step when it comes to this process just multiply that radius by three so seven by three I'll just type in seven times three just type in 21 and you can see the texture looks very nice and natural just come and click ok so i'm just going to be applying this onto the rest of the image so to deselect a given selection simply 
left click away from that selection and that is going to automatically deselect that selection so right click and come to Gaussian blur and I'm just going to be applying this onto the overall image right click and come to Gaussian blur and I'll just be doing this onto the rest of the skin area for this very portrait so right click and come to Gaussian blur so right now we are done applying the Gaussian blur onto the skin area and when you feel like the Gaussian blur is too much right click on the selection and simply come to fade Gaussian blur and simply reduce on the opacity of that effect in that area so after you have applied our Gaussian blur onto the rest of the skin we are just going to come and remove the unwanted blemishes so just come to the high frequency and now select it and just come and get the spot or the clone stamp right here or whichever tool that you prefer to use to remove blemishes and for the clone stamp tool make sure you, you have selected the area that, that has or the layer that has your textures which is the high frequency layer and how to remove these blemishes you simply make sure that the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to eliminate so just come hold on the alternate or option key on the keyboard and left click to copy the skin that is close to the blemish and make sure you release the alternate or option key and simply click over the blemish to eliminate it so that is how to remove it and always make sure the sample is on the current layer as you're doing this process so i'm just going to be removing these blemishes and i'll see you uh, in this tutorial as we proceed i'll just go i'm just going to be forwarding this and now you can see i'm done removing the blemishes from this very image and you can see a quick before and after for the retouching process this is the image before after before after before after so this is how to retouch your images in just 10 minutes using frequency separation and if i told you i've learned something new don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. See you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.